G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is Foul Play here, and we're back again for some more proper action. Um, before we get into the deck tech, I had some complaints on my modern league about the audio being a bit funny. Um, I did have my air conditioner fan running there, and I thought it was going to be okay. Um, just let me know if the audio issues persist in this video, or if they all sound good to you. Um, it was apparently like a funny little feedback noise. Um, so yeah, Lotus Petal today. Uh, that's going to be quite an exciting addition to the deck. I have played with this before and I've actually quite enjoyed it too. Um, so the main power of Lotus Petal is it cheats you like a turn forward almost or a mana forward, um, which is sort of unheard of. And because the mana base is so fragile with like 12 planes, I'm uh, sorry, 12 forests, two planes, three ash barons, um, it gives you access to white mana where you might not otherwise have it. Um, some really cool interactions with it is you can turn one Utopia Sprawl on your forest um, and then play your creature and a white aura at the same time, um, leading into like a turn three aura off the land drop. Uh, it's not going to happen all the time, of course, but when it does, it's nice. Additionally, um, if you don't have a forest in your starting hand, but you have abundant growth plus another land, you can Lotus Petal the abundant growth onto that other land so that you can turn one creature. Um, and third to that is you can potentially play a turn one Silhana Ledge Walker in the absence of a Bogle. All right, for the sideboard, I've taken inspiration from the commune build that we've been doing at the moment. We're bringing in Crewfix's Insight for decks that interact with us a lot or our enchantments a lot. Round three for removal, Flaring Pain for fog decks, Standard Bearer for uh, mirror matches, um, other uh, the Corgate decks, and. Uh, any other white decks that might be bringing in Standard Bearer, Crimson Acolyte for Burn, Young Wolf for Diabolic Edict or Chainer's Edict decks, and Relic of Progenitus for uh, Graveyard decks. Outside of that in the main deck to actually fit in the Lotus Petal, we've gone to three copies of Ancestral Mask, three copies of Rancor, three copies of Cartouche of Solidarity, and I've got two ofs for Sedinor's Eyes and Satessan Training. Satessan Training going to help us Mitigate a little bit of that card disadvantage that Lotus Petal brings. With all that out of the way, let's get into the league. All right, match number one, we're versing Podovisic here. We won the Dyro, we're on the play. Um, our only source of white mana here is Lotus Petal. I do think this is probably above average for a keep though. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Maybe not above average, but like on par with a keep. Um, so there's no real reason to turn one Lotus Petal here. Uh, we'll just Glade Cover Scout and pass. In the event that we see like a burn deck from the opponent, we'll want to save this for Armadillo Cloak, really. Apologies, guys. That's the uh, starting hand that we had there. I didn't realize that uh, had that one hidden from you all. Um, let's go ahead and attack for one. I don't think anything has changed with wanting to hold on to this one for Armadillo Cloak. Um, we could play out a second creature here. I think the chance of main deck and the festivities is relatively low. Additionally, if they had it this game, they would have turned Wanda into this scout, so they'd have to be top decking it for the turn two here. Um, that and I just don't have a good play to do in hand currently. Reckless Impulse from the opponent, finding Swiss Spear and Bolt. And, well, we still haven't hit what we needed. I guess we bite the bullet and cash in on this one now, maybe. I should be putting this on Silhana Ledge Walker. I don't know why I put it on the scout. That's very loose. Um, all right, we'll focus up and uh, play better. All right, great furnace from the opponent. Swift Spear. Wonder if they've got the uh, the tokens coming up. Implement of Combustion, sure thing. So at this point, I think if they had the uh, tokens I probably would have played that over the implement to get the attacking happening a little bit quicker. Opponent in for three. I mean that's not nothing. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and cycle. Get a planes, planes into this one can go on Silhana Ledge Walker. Um four cards in hand for our opponent. They haven't missed a land drop yet. I have a feeling like they have a fair bit of gas in hand. Um I think we can attack with both this turn and then maybe hold up a blocker next turn. Hopefully we don't get punished and killed. 
in the event of all of that, if we put this ethereal armor across here for five, we could attack for five for free. Um, dealt one less damage, so they'd be on 11, but then we would have had the blocker here without potentially losing an aura. Uh, synth from the opponent into Epicure. All right, opponent plays Gav Blast at face, and is this a little bit of like kill math here? We're Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning away from dead. Uh, so almost dead, but not quite. All right, second main Fire Blast, and I don't know why he sequenced this incorrectly, but uh, draws were very, very poor there. Um, on, only Matter Source is drawn in uh, four turns, right? So that was three draw steps, though. All right, on to sideboarding. All right, so here's an example burn deck for this metagame currently. You can see a one of fire blast there. It doesn't mean they didn't have some other burn effect in hand. Um, it looks like they are actually running one and the festivities main deck. Um, so maybe that was a little bit loose, extending both creatures onto the board without adding one toughness to one of them. Um, but yeah, basically what's to be worried about here is in the festivities. Potentially they can also blow up your lands as well with a Molten Rain effect. Reminder guys, if you enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. Um, so usually what I do here is just the efficiency swap. Crimson Acolyte in, Silhana Ledgewalker out. Crimson Acolyte does not have that weakness that Silhana Ledgewalker has. Um, of coming in turn two and getting blown up by and the festivities it also can give your other creatures protection from red to attack through any potential chump blockers run through could actually be useful as well i might just bring that in for an ancestral mask and we'll submit that and get into it ancestral mask is a bit slow and it's not nearly as important as armadillo cloak so we'll keep this one this looks pretty decent All right, we'll turn one Bogle and pass. If they spend their first turn um, blowing up a Bogle, that's fine because we've got Acolyte followed up by turn three Armadillo Cloak. It's usually a pretty winning position. Ah, we find Utopia Sprawl off the top. That makes our life a little bit easier. Let's attack in. It's probably fine trading these off here. Um, if our opponent doesn't want to take the bait, they don't have to. Sure. So that's just preventing damage that they can deal to us in a future turn with like a Reckless Bushwhacker, for example. And next turn we've got Guaranteed Armadillo Cloak, and if we draw like an Ethereal Armor, we can pedal that one in. Uh, great Furnace from our opponent into Reckless Impulse, finding an Epicure and a Synth. Find Satessan Training. So Satessan Training's a bit of a dead draw here. Um, we have enough mana there. We can cycle this one to thin the library. And we can armadillo cloak. I guess if we didn't cycle that one, we could have success and training, which would have been one more life gained. Um, and the card draw a turn earlier. It's probably about even. Um, opponents had a bit of a slower start here, which is helpful to us. All right, so synth from the Reckless Impulse, finding Epicure, uh, Implement of Combustion, and they've also got the Epicure there. So if they uh, broke on land, that's pretty good for us. There's the land. There's the Epicure, one damage to us, back down to 21. Five cards in our opponent's hand, and we find Rancor, so that's just got to be a lock at this point. Uh, it doesn't really matter which way I sequence this, so. We'll just show that we already had the Rancor in hand to stem the salty feelings of like chaining Sutess and training into something as strong as Rancor. Ash Baron's off the top, so go ahead and attack. Uh, 27s should be like a pretty strong spot to win. We're even holding up planes to give protection from red to something should we need to, but we shouldn't really need to do that. Um, you should also note, guys, that your opponents can actually bring in Flaring Pains. 
Uh, so in the event that you block an opponent's creature with like a small Crimson Acolyte, they can Flaring Pain in response, stop damage from being prevented, and then that essentially removes the protection from that creature, and the creature will deal damage to your Crimson Acolyte. It'll still have protection from red, so it can't be targeted by a Lightning Bolt, but it just allows the creature to deal damage to us. Uh, opponents like attempting to do their thing here. Uh, I think we're in a pretty good spot though. End of turn. Yep, we'll cycle again. Get some more mana. Plenty of white sources now. Uh, that doesn't grow our creature, so we'll go ahead and attack. Another mana source. Look at us go. And not too much your opponent can do about that. Back up to 29. Uh, we've hit them down to 5. And it draws a card with their blood token. Now they can actually get a 2-2 blocker with experimental synthesizer. Um, which, I, I mean, it could be frustrating. We've got them close to dead. We just need a little more power or a first strike aura and we'll be completely good. Opponent wasting no time. Sacking experimental synthesizer. Finding Swiss Spear. Getting the token. So currently our attack would put them to one. Opponent getting in with Epicure, which makes sense. Uh, Swift Spear should also be attacking. That's a bit of a weird one to hold back. All right, so we brick. Um, we can't realistically attack at the moment. That would only put our opponent to one. Um, we'd lose our guy and we're just better off waiting a turn and just blocking out this Swift Spear given the opportunity. Um, again, that could run into Flaring Pain though. So we might want to tread waters a little bit precariously there. Opponent, Synthesizer, Cracked, Finding and the Festivities. That can be used to give a prowess trigger to Swift Spear. It's not a great use of the card. I guess it also deals one damage to us, right? So if he plays this though, it gives us the green light to block the Swift Spear. If they've only got one mana up, we can just go for it. All right, so implement from our opponent. The attacks with these samurai tokens, there's potential to be blown out by mutagenic growth as well. Um, so I guess we'll just avoid that situation a little bit here. Wow, we're just like, yikes. So many mana sources this game. All right, well, game plan is the same, so we'll pass back. Eight out of 17 lands drawn, so only nine left in the deck. That gives us good hit odds um, from, from the 44 cards remaining. 35 of which are spells currently. All right, so opponent sucks Implement of Combustion, dealing a damage to us. Uh, plays Epicure from hand, six cards in hand for them. And they're passing to us, not even attacking with these samurai tokens. Uh, yeah, well, our opponent probably has us on land there. So let's go ahead and play out our scout. It's not the spell we're hoping for, but at least it is a creature. We can give it protection from white with the acolyte and force a block out that way. All right, looks like our opponent is happy to send the team in. It could mean they've drawn a mutagenic growth. One, two, three, four, five spells there. Um, let's just keep this simple and block the Monastery Swift Spear, um, giving protection from red to the Glade Cover Scout. All right, so protection from red over here. So that bounces off, no additional effects from our opponent. Uh, we go down to 20, so it's still a very safe life total. I am playing this like hyper, hyper cautious here. Obviously you could go for a free block here, assuming they don't have mutagenic growth and be happy. Um, I just don't want to leave anything to chance when we're so far ahead, right? All right, and there it is. Find the ancestral mask, and that's going to be this game well and truly won for us. Opponent is a sucking blood token here. 
All right, well, that's a nice 16 power Crimson Acolyte. Let's go ahead and attack now. It's well and truly lethal. Blocking with one Samurai token. We've got two instances of Trample. Galvanic Blast, sure thing. On their own creature. Well, we're still going to trample the full amount of damage in that case after they remove their own blocker. Um, damage is assigned <laughs> after instances and sorceries are cast. Mask was a pretty good draw there. Um, a strong argument to have a third copy of it in the deck. I just don't see what would be re removing for it. Maybe Ram Through is worse, but I like the idea of having something that removes our opponent's creatures. Maybe it's just a bit awkward to cast on the draw. I don't know. Let's test it out. All right, so this is a pretty good looking hand. Let's go ahead and keep it. We can turn one a Crimson Acolyte, which seems pretty pogs. Opponent, turn one Great Furnace into Rebirth. Um, cool. I hope for their sake they've got a land heavy hand. Let's go ahead and cast this one. Sack for green. Utopia Sprawl here. Utopia Sprawl for white. Turn one Crimson Acolyte into our opponent. All right, opponent has another Great Furnace into Epicure now. Attacking them with Goblin Tokens. They're tapped up. They're not holding up Flaring Pain. We'll block one. Abundant Growth, so that's an interest, interesting draw, excuse me for the slow there. Um, Alright, so we'll go ahead and Sentinel's Eyes. If we Abundant Growth, we don't have the Vigilance, so we don't have the capacity to block our opponent's creatures. So we'll just continue to develop a little bit here. Attack with that Vigilance stat, and pass the turn. Next turn, off the back of Ancestral Mask, it's going to be a much bigger attack anyway. Alright, so Synth into Mountain Epicure, three in hand, two blood tokens. Opponent serving in again, and we'll just go ahead and block. We're happy to trade off the scout here as well, that's perfectly fine. Alright, and Ancestral Mask, nice chunky attack for 8. Opponent can't currently block this. They can get a blocker with Synthesizer. Uh, they have to do more work than just that, though, to win this one. Alright, opponent plays End the Festivities and deals the damage to us with that one. Um, wiping away our Bogle. Chain Lightning at us. So we'll go ahead and take that one. Down to 11. We're any one enchantment away from winning this. So I guess our opponent's just praying that we break. I should have blocked one of those. I don't know what I was thinking then. Sorry. Um, off with the fairies, apparently. That's two misplays this match. So fortunately for our opponent, we draw Ash Barons. Galvanic Blast our face. All right. Well, if we die to another Galvanic Blast or a Firebolt, it's our fault because we didn't, uh, didn't get that extra block in last turn. All right, opponent cashes in the synthesizer token. Finding a mana. One card in hand still. This can now block our Acolyte. Our Acolyte does not have Trample. So we need basically Rancor to win on the spot. End of turn, cycle this Ash Barons away. And that can go after a Plains. Why the hay not? We'll trade ourselves. Not what we want to see. Uh, let's attack. Opponent caches in the Samurai. Um, then we can second main out the Scout. Are oh, you kidding me? You got the Burn spell? Alright, you're drawing a card. That's okay. Ooh, discard a card, draw a card. Discarded Snow Mountain. So now we do have two blockers, importantly. Opponent activates blood token. Plays experimental synthesizer. All right, let's just active on the scout now to save priority. Finds reckless impulse. My god, my opponent's deck, does it have legs or does it have legs? Uh, currently no blocker for Acolyte, though. So if they can't hit the burn spell here, they just lose. Um, and they need a mana source as well. 
There's lava dart. Oh goodness. <laughs> we are very fortunate here. Alright, opponent passes the turn to us. So let's go for like maximum clinical and just attack with both. Hit in for lethal. Um, both pro red, neither can be blocked by the opponent's red creatures. So we take that victory, and it was pretty close in the end, but thankfully we got there. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to let me know down below. Till next time, have a wonderful day. I will see you then.